Okay, I like horror games as much as the next person, but I was sitting down and seriously thinking, how can you survive some of these? Okay, I get it. You won your wrestling championship back in eighth grade, but let's move you on up to the f***ing nemesis. See how you do against him. <laughs> but seriously, without plot protection, some of these games would be done in like 10 minutes. That's why I'm gonna see what games you can actually survive in. Starting with the classic. I know this game, you know this game, your great grandma probably knows this game. When I was younger and I had to go to the bathroom at midnight, I would just stay in my bed. I was too afraid to get out because I thought I would get murdered by Springtrap. Anyway, you're a security guard and not the funny Paul Blart type. I'm talking about the type that has schizophrenic attacks mid-work shift. Also, these guys are pretty big compared to you, so I would recommend staying in your security office unless you want to get manhandled by Shaquille O'Neal over there. Yeah! And by manhandled, I mean killed and stuffed into a suit. Personally, I can't see any outcome where I would survive this. Even if I checked the cameras and I saw something like this, it would be wraps. I would be dead on the floor of a heart attack. And for those of you thinking, hey, I could just leave the pizzeria. Run! This dude, Foxy, runs 27 miles per hour. That's as fast as a rhinoceros! But honestly, there's lots of different cases. For example, you wouldn't survive something like Ultimate Custom Night because it's quite literally set in hell. But on the contrary, I feel like it's harder to lose the first night of the first game than to win it. So I believe that if you just call it quits after the first night, you would survive. You just crash in an island with nothing but enough medicine and booze to kill an adult male and conveniently, survival axe. Hmm. What are the odds of that? Anyway, in this game, you're pretty much stuck in the forest fighting for your life against the elements. You can either go it alone or team up with your friends to reenact grown-ups. It's not all fun and games, though. Because this forest has cannibals, and they're naked. And not only that, there's also mutants, and these things are ugly. Like, what is that? I mean, I mean that one's just fat, but like, ew! And these things are strong, like Hulk level strong. So you could forget the idea of building a safe little tree house to stay in because it's gone. And you'll never be safe because these things come night and day. And you know what's the worst thing? Is that the only pistol in this game is a pistol that was probably used by George Washington. And not only that, it takes hours to get it. Now we're not fighting the British over here. We are fighting man-made atrocities. So I don't think this relic from the War of 1812 is gonna beat one. Whatever this is. To be fair though, there are other weapons that you can find around, like a whole ass katana in one of the caves. But also, those caves are infested with cannibals, and I don't think any normal, sane person would hear the sentence cave and cannibals and think to themselves, oh yeah, that sounds fine. You're an idiot! Why are you yelling, bro? What I'm trying to say is that you can survive on the island, but it's not indefinitely. But I didn't say the that. The whole point of the game is to find your son that was on the plane with you. But realistically, do you, do you really have to go find him? Forget Billy! Billy's dead! So the smart person in this situation would just build a raft and leave. I'm sorry, son, but it's your, it's your fault for getting taken, man. Tough world. Welcome to the family, son. There's a ton of Resident Evil games, so before we get started, let's just try to filter out the ones that you definitely would not survive in. No. Eh. No! Maybe. No. No. Um. Maybe. No! No! Alright, well let's see why. In Resident Evil 1, you have to escape a mansion that's overrun with zombies, but dude, I can't even escape my own house to go get food. In Resident Evil 2, the infection from inside of the mansion starts to spread to Raccoon City. And I don't know about you guys, but if I'm going to the city and I stop at a gas station to find out the actual zombie apocalypse has started, I'm going back where I came from. In Resident Evil 3... In Resident Evil 4, you're a government agent tasked with finding the president's kidnapped daughter. But when you get to the village that she's suspected of being at, the locals, uh... I was wondering if you might recognize a girl in this photograph. Yeah, they're not too friendly to outsiders. So in an act of questionable legality, you have to go kill the whole village. Honestly, the odds are way in your favor because you're just mag dumping a bunch of hillbillies with pitchforks and axes. You find out that she's being held in the town's church, and at this point, 
Time out. I'm leaving. I'm calling SEAL Team 6. My job's done. They can do the rest. I'm surviving. I don't know much about Resident Evil 5, but this dude looks straight out of the Matrix, bro. He can literally teleport! Now you see me! Now your facial structure is rearranged! Like, you are not surviving! In Resident Evil 6, do you remember the infection from Resident Evil 2 and how it was confined to one city? Yeah, it's everywhere now. Yeah, you see that person? That would be you. Moving on. In Resident Evil 7, you go out to find your missing wife, which eventually leads you to this freak show of a house that looks straight out of the Blair Witch Project. But you don't really have a choice to leave, so time to put on your big boy pants. And once you go inside, you can find something cooking. And that's cockroaches. After searching the house, you finally yeah. find your wife, but something's wrong. I don't know, it might be the fact that she has yellow teeth or- ah! Now there's two outcomes for this situation. One for those who don't drink milk, and one for those who do. Oh! My back, it's broken! Oh. So if you don't avidly drink milk, then you're dead. Now let's see the other outcome. Oh my goodness, I feel fine. Yeah, that's until she cuts your hand off. Don't worry though, it'll get stapled back on later. <laughs> so stupid. Anyway, you get adopted into this very healthy and functional family. Eat it, it's good! Dumb some bitch wasn't no good if it hit him! Now the best thing you can do right now is just try to stay alive until the police officer comes. Now the police officer, oh he's dead. His fate is sealed. Now you just gotta think about yourself now. So while the garage door is closing, you're gonna run! You're gonna do an Indiana Jones slide under action style, get in his car, drive out. Boom! You survived. Unless you don't drink milk. Then you're dead. In Resident Evil 8, one of the boss fights is literally a dragon. I'm not gonna explain why you can't survive this. Dying Light needs no introductions. It's a zombie game that dwarfs all of the other games in its genre. Oh yeah, except Left 4 Dead 2. I love Left 4 Dead 2. Anyway, luckily for the human population, all of the zombies are trapped in one city. But let's say for plot's sake, you're in this city. Now, if you're not fast, I'm sorry, you're cooked. Like, there's nothing you can do. Look at how fast these guys are! But you know what, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Maybe we have some track stars watching. The only thing that the zombies are vulnerable to you know, other than smashing their head in, is UV light. So you're gonna wanna go to your local Walmart, Home Depot, Ace Hardware, anywhere. Just get all of them. You need these or you will not get past the first night because nights in this game are brutal. There is a reason on the cover it says, good night, good luck. And that's because at night, the volatiles come out. What is that, dude? Like, that is terrifying! I would not want to live on the same planet as this thing! It's stronger than a silverback gorilla. And according to my research, those things can bench press, not deadlift, bench press, a whole Ford F-150! Look at those muscles! And look at that ass! Damn. Anyway, this thing is faster than a car! And it has the durability of a damn tungsten cube! Dude, this thing is so strong, I wouldn't put it past it if it could break the back of a polar bear like Bane did to Batman. Yeah, so it's safe to say that going out at night is a no. But at the same time, are you even safe to go out during the day? And the answer is also no. Because you can run into the literal juggernaut in zombie form! <laughs> Honestly, even after all I said, it is possible to survive. You could definitely move to some fishing town, settle down, have UV lights everywhere, and I mean everywhere. You want all parts of this building secured. And you'll be fine, honestly. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be a rough one. So in SCP Containment Breach, you're a prisoner who's been brought to a facility. And this facility was made to hold different anomalies that have been found throughout the world. And these anomalies vary a lot. For example, one of them's a book about diseases, and whatever page you flip to, you get that disease. Yeah! Some anomalies are alive, like the old man that can literally phase through the ground or the walls, and if he touches you, he can bring you into his little pocket dimension to make you watch Charlotte's Web a million times! Stop it! Stop it! Please! I beg you! 
the first one that you're guaranteed to encounter is SCP-173. And this thing is so fast that if you even blink, that's enough time for it to come over to you and snap your neck. So you better be prepared for the most intense staring contest of your life. But I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Let's say that you escape and go further into the facility. It's just gonna get worse and worse. You can find an elevator that brings you down further into the facility, and as soon as the door opens, it's pitch black. And that is red flag number one. And you know what's worse? You're not alone down there. <laughs> There's something down there that can steal people's voices. So imagine me just walking down in the dark room where I can't see anything, and I hear, Hello? Is someone there? I need help. That is red flag number two, and I don't even need a third one. I'm going back up. And as soon as you're taking the elevator up, you get to the top, you think you're safe, doors open, you see this. And I can't take this shit no more. Now, I don't even care if you're Iron Mike Tyson. You are not surviving this game. And I've only mentioned four anomalies. I haven't even mentioned... The moment you see this thing's face, you're dead. It doesn't matter if it's for half a second.